What's up guys, Shane Starnes here, and as many of you know, I use the M1 MacBook Pro as my main editing device. The only issue with this is that all it has for I.O. are a couple of USB-C ports. To get anything done with this laptop, I've gotta have a great USB-C hub. Anchor was nice enough to send out both the PowerXpand 8-in-1 hub and the PowerXpand 11-in-1 hub. We're gonna compare both of these hubs. Both of these hubs are awesome, but they have a few subtle differences. We're gonna take a look at those. Let's go ahead and get started. Started. Big shout outs to Anchor for sponsoring this video. All right, we'll start things off by taking these out of the box. We see what all they come with. You can see the 8-in-1 is a bit smaller than the 11-in-1. So if you're looking for something more compact, based on what you're doing, the 8-in-1 may be the better of the two. Both of these are small enough to be portable. So I don't think size is going to be an issue uh, regardless of which one you choose. So another main difference here, the 8-in-1 is $89.99 on Amazon.com. I've got a link in the description. And then the 11-in-1 is $99.99 uh, also on Amazon. All right, so we'll set the boxes to the side. Uh, we do have instruction manuals for both. So we'll set those to the side. Uh, it looks like we have a little velvet carrying pouch for both, that's nice. It's gonna help you keep everything organized. So I like that. Keep this from getting scratched up and damaged. So that's pretty cool. We'll set those to the side. And then we have our actual USB-C hubs. The eight and one on the left and the 11 and one on the right. One thing that really stands out here is the 11 and one has a braided cable, which means you're not gonna have to deal with uh, tangling. To me, it seems like the braided cable is more sturdy and durable than the rubber cable, but either way, these both feel pretty solid. First up, we'll take a look at the Anchor PowerXpand 8 and one hub. Uh, let's just kind of take a look around. So we already saw that we have this rubberized uh, USB-C cable. This is what you're going to connect to your laptop your MacBook or your PC. So the network port here is good for one gigabit per second. Not all laptops have a super high speed Wi-Fi. So in some cases you may want to have a hardwire for your internet. We also have a HDMI port here. A lot of USB-C hubs do have an HDMI port, but for the most part, they're only gonna show 1080p in less than 60 frames per second. Here you're gonna get 4K at 60 hertz, which is pretty awesome. You also have a USB-C port here that can transfer at speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second. What that means is that you can transfer a 20 gigabyte file in about 16 seconds, which is awesome. We also have a power in port. The power in port here will support 100 watts, which this is going to take 15 watts to operate on. So you're left with 85 watts to charge your laptop. Most USB-C hubs are gonna have much less wattage, so maybe 30 or 45 watts or something like that, which is okay for charging like maybe an iPad Pro or your iPhone, uh, but being able to get a full charge on a laptop without damaging the laptop, it's great to have that 85 watts of charging. If we go to the other side here, we do have a micro SD card slot and a full size SD card slot, and we have two USB-A ports, both are able to transfer at speeds of 10 gigabits per second. We'll go ahead and move on to the 11 in one. And of course, we do have a one gigabit per second ethernet port. We do have a audio jack. We have two display ports here. We've got a uh, display port and an HDMI port. One thing that I wanna mention about these two here is if you use just one of them at a time, you can get 4K at 60 hertz. If you use them both at the same time, you're gonna get 2K at 60 hertz on both displays. So here you can actually use dual monitors. Now, my M1 MacBook Pro does not support dual monitors, so I can just basically screen mirror to a larger monitor with one of these ports. Uh, but if you have like a Windows laptop or something like that that does support dual monitors, this is going to be great for you. We also have a micro SD card slot and a full size SD card slot. Once again, we have power in over USB-C, and this is a 100 watt port. So that means 15 to power up the unit and 85 watts to power up your laptop or whatever device you're plugging this into. If we turn it around to the back here, we've got three USB-A ports. Two of these are for connecting peripherals. One of these is a five gigabit per second data transfer port, 
and a USB-C port that transfers at five gigabits per second. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, five gigabits per second is plenty fast. If you need faster because you're transferring terabytes of data, then yeah, you probably wanna go with this 8M1. For me, the fact that I get the dual display ports, I can probably live with the five gigabits per second. So the main differences here, as you guys can tell, you get dual display ports, uh, but five gigabits per second transfer speeds. On the 8M1, you get one display port, but it transfers at 10 gigabits per second. What do you guys think? Which one are you going to go for? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks guys for watching. Be blessed. I'll see you in the next one.